don't know about you, dude, but I think that Spider-Man hologram looks pretty damn good. Hmm. Sure does. <clears throat> There's just one thing. You forgot to remove the tracking marker. God damn it. You can vibe? Oh, I like it. Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learning you some filmmaking and learn you good. Now, I think I've got a few requests about this one from, well, one particular person. Let's take a look. He's requested this vibe blast effect a lot. Like, my god. So, that's what we're doing today. Now, in order to complete this effect, gang, you have to head down to the description, head to filmlearning.com slash downloads, and download the vibe effects pack. In this pack, you're gonna find five different vibe blast effects from different positions, and you'll also find a flare file, and yes, I've even included a sound effect file with this one. Also, you need to shoot your actor just shooting out some good vibrations. You feel it, baby? Not those ones, although that is 90s fresh. So guys, let's stop fanning about and get to work. Okay guys, let's do this thing. We're here in After Effects and I've got my shot set up in a comp and ready to go. As you can see, I've picked the shot where our Vibe Blast is first launched out, as it's the most complicated to pull off. So I figured that's the best example to work with. So our first step is pretty simple. We'll head over to the project window where I have all of our vibes imported and I'm gonna choose mm, Vibe 4 as it looks like it'll suit this shot. Let's drag and drop it into the comp and change the transfer mode to screen. Now from there, let's move it along the comp to make sure it starts when our actor, you know, pretends to shoot out the blast. And there we go. We can then move it into place over our hand. If you need to, you may have to scale it down. I'm happy with the size right now, so I'm gonna leave it at 100%. Now, me personally, I'm going to make the layer 3D by checking this box right here. And then I'm going to adjust the rotation on both the X and the Y axis, just to make that perspective suit my shot a little bit more. But as always, gang, have a good play around until that blast looks just right in your shot. If we check out a preview now, you can see it's looking much better. But even though our actor keeps his hand still, there's still a little bit of movement in that hand that is taking me out of the effect. So let's hit P to bring up our position controls, hit the stopwatch, and let's just head through frame by frame and slightly adjust that position of our blast to marry up with our hand movements, like so. Since our actor is holding still, it's only a subtle little bit of movement, but it does help to sell the fact that this blast is emanating from their hand. If we check out a preview now, it looks much better. Okay, hard part's done. Yes, that's right, you heard me. Now we've just gotta make it look cooler. First step is to duplicate our Vibe Blast, head over to Presets and type Fast Blur, and then we'll drop this on that top layer. We'll then check Repeat Edge Pixels, and then we'll crank this bad boy up to around 150. We now have a nice glow happening. But of course, I hear you say, but it's not blue, Grant, I want it blue, or whatever color you're saying right now. Well, settle down, you young ragamuffin, because that's the next step. Let's head up, grab a new adjustment layer, and then we're gonna drag that underneath our vibe layers on top of our actor's footage. We'll then trim it to start just as our blast is coming out, like so. Next, we need to animate a mask path. So let's grab the pen tool up here, and then we'll draw a rough mask in kind of a cone shape around our blast, like this. And once you're done, hit F and feather it out around 50 pixels. We'll then hit M on the keyboard and hit the stopwatch on mask path. We'll then move forward one frame and expand our mask to cover the entire blast that's moving out of the frame, like so. Nice. We'll then add some effects to this adjustment layer, because that's what it's for, right? Firstly, some color. Let's head up to Effect, Color Correction, and add a Photo Filter. From the drop-down menu, I'm gonna select Cooling Filter 82. And there we go. And then I'll set the density to 52. Now from there, it's time to add some displacement to sell the blast is flowing out in waves. Let's head to Effect, Distort and add Turbulent Displace. From there, I'm gonna set the displacement type to Bulge Smoother. I'll then set the amount to 35 and the size to 78. But guys, feel free to have a play with these settings. 
because you may find that they don't suit your shot. Next, let's grab our offset target, hit the stopwatch, and we're gonna place that target right on the hand of our actor. We'll then move ahead to the end of the comp. Now let's zoom out, there we go. And then let's move that target way off frame so it's in the direction of your blast. If we check out our preview, we can now see we have a nice wave of flowing energy out of our hand like a pulse. Moving on, let's duplicate that adjustment layer and drag it above everything. We'll then duplicate it once more. From there, I wanna separate the coloring from the displacement. So let's click on that bottom adjustment layer and delete the photo filter. There we go. Then of course, let's click on the top adjustment layer and delete that displacement. We're doing this merely to make it easier to work on these effects separately. So let's turn off the coloring layer and work on that displacement for now. Now firstly, we're gonna hit F and we're gonna increase the feather on this mask to 105. So with our displacement, I'm only gonna change one thing. I'm just gonna increase the amount of our displacement to 41. This will give us a little more variance in our displacement and this not only covers the blast itself, but it also displaces everything else under it as well, including our first displacement. In other words, it gives our effect a little more depth. Next, let's turn on our coloring layer, and I think I'm gonna bump the density down to say 20 or so, as the coloring is a little bit overpowering. Next, I'm gonna hit F, and I'm gonna increase the feather amount on that one to 300 pixels. That way, it just spreads out nice and smoothly. Nice. Now guys, I'm not entirely happy with the vibe glow, so here's a quick fix for that. What I'm gonna do is select both vibe layers, right click, and hit pre-compose. I'll then make sure that all attributes are moved into the new composition, click OK, and then we'll change the transfer mode on that pre-comp to screen. From there, I'm gonna duplicate that pre-comp and then add a fast blur to that. And then I'm gonna increase that fast blur up over 400. That way we get a much better glow. But I'm not finished yet. I'm also gonna head up to our adjustment layer and copy that photo filter and paste that onto this pre-comp as well. I'll then select the fast blur and then hit Control V and paste that photo filter one last time. Now if we solo both of those pre-comp vibe layers, you can see we have a much better result and it looks pretty good just on its own. Now, let's move on. From there, let's add a flare because who doesn't like flares? Now since not all of you have optical flares or no light factory installed in your version of After Effects, I've included a flare file that you can add to your footage. So let's just grab said flare and drop it into our scene and change the transfer mode to screen. Done. Now you may have adjusted this one a little bit, but not for me because I made this one for my shot. So lucky me. So our effect is almost done, but our last cherry on top is adding some of that lens dirt to our scene. Cause as we all know, the VFX team on the flash love them some lens dirt. So I have a lens dirt still from Action VFX that I've downloaded from their free download section. And I'm just gonna drag and drop that into my comp and trim it to start when our blast starts once again. I'm gonna scale it down like so, and then change the transfer mode to screen. I'll then grab the pen tool and just draw the exact shape I want. And then of course, I'll hit F and feather it out around 200 pixels so it's nice and smooth. I'll then hit T to bring up opacity, and then I'm gonna hold the Alt key and click the stopwatch. I'm then gonna type this expression. Wiggle, hit the space bar, bracket, 30, comma, 60, and an end bracket. And then we'll click off this layer. Now, if we check out a preview gang, you'll see that this makes our lens dirt flicker, which further sells our vibe blast in the scene as pulsing out in waves. Now, just to finish off that lens dirt and blend it in just a little bit better, we're just gonna copy and paste that photo filter setting straight onto our lens dirt and just maybe adjust the density so that it blends in better. And believe it or not, guys, that's it. Oh, I almost forgot one last cherry on top, guys. I selected everything, pre-composed it, and then at the point of the blast firing out, I added a little bit of camera shake, just using the Red Giant Universe camera shake plugin. But like I said, it's just a cherry on top. If you wanna do it, do it. If you don't wanna do it, don't do it. The only difference I'd say in the close-up, say here, is that it's a different vibe blast, and since it's closer to the camera, I've added a camera lens blur to it. So by all means, download the pack and have some fun. Cause that my friends, is another flash effect. Mm, done. Add up all of those steps and you get something like this. You forgot to remove the tracking marker. God damn it. So guys, that's my take on Cisco's vibe blast effect. And I do mean my take. 
If you've watched The Flash over the past three seasons, you'll see that that vibe blast has gone through a lot of iterations. So just trying to settle on one particular type of vibe blast was a pain in and of itself. So hopefully you enjoyed my version of this. If you did, please like and share the video. If you're new here, why not hit subscribe or check out the Patreon, or maybe you want to enter the Film and 60K short film competition, or maybe you just want to check out another Film Learning episode. My social media crap is above my head. I post all the time, exclusive videos and whatnot on the Twitter and the Facebook. They're up there. And until next time, and maybe we breach a few things, keep learning.